Hi everybody and welcome again to my channel. You'll notice I have a different bear this time and this bear is from a friend at a meetup that I recently went to but that will be a subject of a different video. Anyways I wanted to do a video about the Shepherd the Flock book which is the elders book that is used by Jehovah's Witnesses and uh, by specifically by their elders in order to um, help them shepherd the flock if you will. I want to make a few points about that book um, just some brief ones because it's a long book, there's a lot in it, but what's important about this book is it tells you what the Watchtower's view of shepherding is and how it should be done. So the first thing to know about this book is that it is a secret book. Only the elders get it. Nobody else is supposed to get it. Um, that raises some questions. Why did the elders have to have a secret book? Uh, did Jesus have any secrets that he kept from the disciples? Uh, did the, the apostles have a secret book that they kept from other people? Uh, there's there's no reason to believe that. Second of all, uh, the book has 29 chapters, and it's not until chapter 25 that they directly address, address shepherding. Most of the uh, chapters of the book deal with the business of the congregation and ju the judicial process. So in fact, this book is actually to create watchtower policy lawyers and enforcers more so than it is to create shepherds. And as case in point, in the introduction, on page 6, paragraph 1, the second sentence, it says, Providing accurate theocratic direction to our brothers and sisters is a weighty responsibility. So the term theocratic here means um, watchtower directed. So direction provided is not specifically from the Bible, but it's from watchtower literature's interpretation of what's in the Bible. So some other interesting highlights. Um, page 7 is where they start talking about how the elders work together as a body. They spell out the elders' responsibilities. And in page 8 and 9, they actually talk about the responsibilities of the bodies of elders. And this is actually quite fascinating. There are 20 of these responsibilities. None of these responsibilities specifically deal with shepherding. Now, to the indoctrinated Jehovah's Witness, there may be some aspects that um, appear to sh as their shepherding, but nothing specifically outlines shepherding. And the number one responsibility is making recommendations for appointments and deletions of elders and services. So everything is more so about deciding how the congregation runs. Uh, it doesn't specifically talk about um, spiritual food. It does talk about local needs, which I suppose you can consider that to be shepherding the congregation. But shepherding is never specifically mentioned as a re direct responsibility. There are incidental things which are part or could be considered part of shepherding, but they're not spelled out specifically as such. So another interesting thing is I want to talk about the chapter that talks about shepherding. So it's essentially, this chapter tells how the elders actually uh, shepherd the individuals in the congregation. Um, it's, it's a fascinating conversation. So in paragraph 1 on page 223, it says, the second sentence is, This includes protecting the congregation so that no one is lost through neglect or because of the influence of Satan, the world, or apostate wolves. Um, skipping another sentence says, The objective of shepherding is to impart a spiritual gift that is faith-strengthening and to provide needed accommodation and encouragement. So this is the objective of shepherding as far as the Watchtower is concerned, uh, but yet... The book does not center around how to provide such encouragement to people. It centers more so around how the business of the congregation is run. And there's a point I want to bring up about how the Watchtower views the spiritual weakness. In fact, on page 226, there's a section entitled Recognizing Spiritual Weakness. This is paragraphs 7 and 8. I'm going to read both of these verbatim. Paragraph 7. Symptoms of spiritual weakness may include loss of enthusiasm for the truth, neglecting daily Bible reading and personal study or attendance at congregation meetings, missing entire months of field service activity, undue emphasis on the pursuit of pleasure or material things, or criticizing the elders and the organization. So I'm going to stop there for a second and make some comments. So essentially in paragraph 7, what you realize is that when you wake up, these are all the things that you begin doing. So Jehovah's Witnesses are taught to look for these things as sign of spiritual weakness. This is one of the primary reasons why many of us have a hard time getting through to people. Because as we start to ask questions that they view to be criticizing, as we start to not attend meetings as much, uh, they're viewing this as signs that we now have a spiritual problem that needs some sort of help. So right, right away, as you start waking up and thinking for yourself, you begin to exhibit some of these signs, and people's uh, alert goes on. So now I'm going to read paragraph 8. 
says, when shepherds detect signs of spiritual weakness, they use the scriptures to remind the publishers of the importance of praying for Holy Spirit, reading the Bible daily, studying Christian publications, meditating on scriptural matters, regularly attending meetings, assemblies, and conventions, regularly participating in field service, and being willing to accept spiritual help from those taking the lead. So this paragraph in no way, shape, or form addresses how to answer anyone's questions that are legitimate. All elders are going to do when you're spiritually weak is get you back in the program. They want you to read the literature again, to participate in the meetings, to go in field service. So if you are awake and you have questions about doctrine that they cannot answer, they will not even attempt to do that on the vast majority of occasions. Um, if it gets to the point where that's the issue, um, that's, that's not directly what this chapter is dealing with. So what we see with shepherding is the real point of shepherding from the standpoint of the watchtower is just to keep people in the organization doing the things the organization tells them without questioning. And additionally, we see that any time you do question the organization or you slack off on your spiritual routine, as it were, um, not only the, the elders, but everybody is trained to view you as spiritually weak. So this is just a quick overview of the shepherding book. There's a lot more things to talk about here. But basically the point that I wanted to make is the shepherding book has little to do with shepherding, but it has everything to do with running the congregation and keeping people in line with Watchtower thought. And this book is actually aimed, as I said, at making Watchtower lawyers and Watchtower policy enforcers, not shepherds. Thanks for watching.